psychiatric hospital. We supported someone from the Association of the Mentally Disabled and also the WHO. We trained them in Nigeria at the University of Ibadan for them to understand better what is mental health advocacy and leadership. But not also to only think in the confinement of the institution and hospital, but to think broader and to go beyond the hospital to the offices and to the community and to talk to people. Also, we do a lot of advocacy on television and radio to raise the awareness of people. We are calling on the government, I will also use this opportunity as well, to do some advocacy, to call on the Minister of Health and Social Welfare, to push on the mental health legislation and the mental health policy, because these are key instruments and documents that will guide our practices and our achievements in the area of mental health. Oh, okay. Uh, so far, in collaboration with uh, the World Health Organizations and other agencies, no, oh no, how do you describe uh, the, your achievement in these areas? In this area, recently, some two weeks back, we've launched what we are calling the National Stakeholders Council on Mental Health. Seldom in mental health you see any group that is an advocacy group or a service user group that speaks for persons with mental illness. You hardly see this. So this is why the Mental Health Leadership and Advocacy Program recently established what we are calling the National Stakeholders Council on Mental Health. These are people from different walks of life but with interest in the area of mental health. We have people who are traditional healers in this group. We have uh, a pastor in this group. We have an imam in this group. We have a musician, someone from, different people from NGOs. So you see, the composition of this body will give us the ability and power to be able to advance mental health causes in this country. As you said, we've collaborated with so many people and groups in this, um, our course. The custodians of these programs are the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. But our key collaborative partner in the Gambia is the World Health Organization, WHO, where we have our offices. But also VSO Gambia, but especially the government through the Minister of Health and Social Welfare. We met the minister some couple of days ago and the permanent secretary with the dean of the medical school of the university. Yeah. We've seen that interest in the minister and the permanent secretary, that they want to see changes to occur in the area of mental health. And when your leader accepts that challenge, and calls you to the table that come forward and we discuss on what the, the future is for mental health. There is still hope, and we want to congratulate our very honorable Minister Fatim Baji for that very wonderful initiative she has taken. We are telling her it's never easy. Mental health is a great challenge. It's very expensive, but we are very happy with the move she is taking, and we hope she will improve on those ones so as to improve mental health services in the country. Uh, Mr. Sama, uh, uh, okay. Mr. Dauda, since you have the opportunity to be here today, uh, what are some of the things again you think are fit uh, for this discussion and that you want to be showcased? What we want to showcase, part of it is also, we've gone around the country to do some study. And this document, called the Gambia Mental Health Report 2012, contains all issues with regards to mental health. And if anybody wants a copy, you just have to visit the WHO office in Koto. But key issues in this are sexual abuse. In this study, we've recorded 46 cases of sexual abuse. Out of this, 11 pregnancies, but only seven babies were accounted for. Who are the fathers of these babies? Who are the people who will sexually abuse persons with mental illness? These are concerns and questions we need to answer. Also, you look at the chaining and the physical restraint that are being applied on persons with mental illness. In this report, you have photos. You see someone, we've went to a traditional healer, we've gone to a traditional healer, and there is this young person, age around 32. He was chained up to the extent he is nearly losing his leg. We are not saying no to restraining people, but it should be with authority and with the interest of you helping the patient. But if that guy loses his leg, what are you doing for that particular person? But also using some terminologies on the media especially, like mad, lunatic, these are discriminating, degrading. Welcome back to Weekend Spectrum. The recently held Republican convention in Tampa, Florida, in the United States, has been using the opportunity provided by the high-profile political event to market the Republican nominee, Mitt Romney, as a man. In their bid to win hearts and minds for their preferred candidate across the United States, Republican strategists and family members alike have begun a public relations campaign to end the Amir Romney to the electorate. It's job number one at the Republican convention. 
We need President Mitt Romney. The president America needs is Mitt Romney. President Romney, boy, I like the sound of that. Call it the selling of GOP presidential nominee Mitt Romney. It's filling in the blanks on Mitt Romney and, and telling and, voters and who he is. From highlighting his resume, Mitt Romney turned businesses around in the private sector to describing what he'd do as president. Mitt Romney will tell us the hard truths we need to hear to put us back on a path to growth and create good-paying private sector jobs again in America. While most polls, like our latest CNN ORC survey, indicate the race for the White House is a dead heat, most polls also indicate Romney lags behind President Barack Obama when it comes to relating to the average voter. And even though he's been running for president on and off for six years, most Americans don't know Mitt Romney the man. That's where his wife Ann comes in. I know this good and decent man for what he is. He's warm and loving and patient. Now it's her husband's turn on the podium. I think it's a great opportunity for people to get to see him in you know, a very unfiltered way. To, to get to hear his story and his vision for this country. I think in large parts he's been uh, defined by the opposition up to this point. And it's a chance for him to, for other, you know, the voters to get to know what kind of candidate he really is. What will he say? Romney hasn't said much about his speech other than a share that he wants to highlight. How America is going to get on track and we're going to get this economy really going again. But his top strategist gave us an appetizer. It'll be a clear vision of Romney presidency and very much from his heart about America and why he wants to be president and what a presidency would be like. With the nation watching, this convention and Romney's primetime speech are incredibly important opportunities, opportunities the Romney campaign wants to leverage. Paul Steinhauser, CNN, Tampa, Florida. More quite some interesting stuff. I actually have a hunch that this is going to be a very tightly contested race. But what do you think about Mitt Romney and his chances of winning? Yeah, I agree that uh, the race will be very tight. Looking at the polls, which are constantly changing, mm -hmm. uh, many people have been waiting for this moment to see the actual uh, Mitt Romney because you know, he, he was, he's not as well known as uh, Obama. Mm -hmm. So this gave him the opportunity to come you know, for the entire world, for the Americans, for the voters who really matter. Mm -hmm. to hear from the man himself mm -hmm. you know and uh, there are a lot of things been said about about him you know that you know he doesn't he doesn't, he doesn't interact much with women women issues have not been much on his platform mm -hmm. but we've seen his wife and even his children his family coming out mm -hmm. you know to, to praise him you know to extol his virtues that behind the scenes at home mm -hmm. he's a good husband and he's a good father i think this is this is good for the republicans uh, as they begin their their campaign I must add that was quite strategic, but hopefully it will end the Mitt Romney to the electorates. Yeah, looking at the turnout and the cheers, the applause mm -hmm. that he got from the people on the ground there, yeah, he, he seems to be he, he seems to have won hearts and minds, and the Republicans will be the assault. But more really, who, who is your actual candidate? Well, for me, looking at the American uh, politics, I'm not I'm, I don't have much. Uh, I'm not, I'm not following the debate yet. I think as the debates begin, mm -hmm. I will have my candidate. Wow, until then. That's Weekend Spectrum this week. Thanks for joining us. of great young minds and a competition where everyone is a winner. It is a display of academic potentials, talent, and beauty. Founded and supported by His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Dr. Alhaji Yahya E.J.J. Jamin, the finals of the 2012 Miss 22nd July Scholarship Pageant will take place on Saturday, September 15, 2012 at the Paradise Suits Hotel starting at 8 p.m. The chief guests of honors are His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Dr. Alhaji Yahya A.J.J. Jame, and Her Excellency the First Lady, Madam Zainab Yahya A.J.J. Jame. Guest artist is Sekuba Bambino, Mam Tamsirnjai, and Jali Keba. 
proudly sponsored by the government.